Hey, Penny Prepper here. Um, I wanted to get into my series on tanning height. Um, and first off, I have to say, I'm really self-conscious about it right now, but I'm sick and I like can't breathe and my glands are all swollen right here. And so I just have this massive double chin and you probably wouldn't have even noticed if I hadn't have pointed it out. Um, but it's driving me insane because it's just like my glands like are swollen down here and I've never had them do that before. They always usually like swell here if I'm sick, but it's really weird and it makes my tongue feel kind of fat, but yeah, it's really annoying. So, um, anyways, I just, I had to say something cause I'm super self-conscious about it. So if you see me like, if I'm like talking to you like this, <laughs> it's because of my massive double chin. <laughs> So anyways, uh, so this is my flushing beam, um, and it was a log that we got out of the woods, and um, I smoothed it down um, by hand. I used uh, this, I don't know what this is called, um, but I just went through and I peeled the bark off, and then I spent a couple hours just um, really just smoothing it down, because if you have... Um, any bumps or anything that your flushing tool can catch on, um, it will cut your hide, especially if your flushing tool is really sharp. Um, the first hide I actually did, I had this other um, flushing beam and my flusher was not doled down and I straight up just put a huge slice in my hide. So I decided to do this this year and it works amazing. So this is a Weeb 12 inch flusher and they come super sharp. I actually had to dull it down. It's still really sharp, but you just have to watch your angle. Um, so the first, the basic things that you need for tanning hide is a really smooth flushing beam. And I would say this one is, I don't know, it's probably eight inches um, around, but you just need a nice um, surface, smooth surface. Um, and you need a flusher. You need some hides and um, some water, um, various size buckets, um, garbage cans, whatever. So um, for buckskin, uh, basically you first, you just set the hide out and you have to flush it and flushing it is you're just removing all of the fat and um, any meat that was left over after skinning it. And, <coughs> oh gosh, sorry. What it'll look like after it is um, fleshed is it will look like this. So as you can see, um, it's nice and smooth. Um, and then the hair is still on it on the other side. So for buckskin, after you flesh it, you soak it in water. If you soak it in water, then it's going to take about a week. Um, I actually use wood ashes because I have a lot of wood ashes. Um, and the wood ashes, um, just basically the lye, it just speeds up the process um, of um, the causing the hair to slip. Um, because if you don't do that, then the hair just you don't get the the follicle it just um it rips it out and it just doesn't work so another thing if you don't have wood ashes or you don't feel like waiting for a week to 10 days or whatever you can get some hydrated lime um and do that and with the hydrated lime or the wood ashes it usually takes like three to four days of soaking and your hide will get really puffy and like rubbery um, and then you can go on to the next step, which is, um, scraping off the hair and the epidermis, the epidermis layer. Um, and then here, I just wanted to show you, um, this is a rawhide. Um, I did not have time to finish it. So, um, I just let it dry out and, um, you can make all sorts of cool stuff out of rawhide, but, um, you know, if you don't have time to finish, you can just let it dry out and then you can just re-soak it and go right back to um, the process of making the buckskin. So um, yeah, I'll probably do that, but you can do all sorts of stuff with rawhide. And I was actually thinking about making my dogs some treats 
um, out of this one, just soaking it until it's wet and then cutting it into strips, braiding it and letting it dry back out. So you can make your own doggy treats. Um, chew toys. And then for uh, the traditional brain tan uh, wet scrape method of making buckskin, you, you know, of course called brain tan. So you use either brains, which each animal miraculously has the perfect amount of brains to tan its own hide. Um, or you can use um, eggs, basically anything fatty because those fat cells are going to get into, in between um, the cell, the fibers of the, the hide um, and cause that, and it kind of keeps them separated and keeps them soft and also helps to preserve it, I believe. Um, but I use Murphy's oil soap um, because, you know, if you leave it soak in the brains or the eggs, it can really start to smell. But I can just leave it soak in my Murphy's with water. You just, you know, the brains or the eggs or the Murphy's, you mix it with water and you let the hide soak after you um, remove the hair and um, the grain layer. Um, which is the, what the hair um, is held in. It's the grain layer, but which with leather, you actually leave that grain layer on. You just take the hair off. But um, I like to use the Murphy's because when it's done, it leaves this really nice like Murphy's oil soap smell. Um, but also if I don't have time to do it right away, I don't have to worry about my solution going rancid and stinking. Um, it's just kind of there and it smells fine. So, um, I was going to show you actually how to flush, but I don't have this set up and it's really wobbly. Um, so um, I'm not going to show that, but basically all you do with the flushing beam is you, you just put the hide and you just lean and you hold it and then you just scrape off all of that um, extra fat and you know meat, whatever. So um, yeah, so first step is flushing and you get all that off. Second step is soaking it to get the hair to slip. Third step is you um, remove all the hair. And this here, this was actually a white tail that I harvested last year. And I'm really sad because we were actually gonna do hair on with this. And, um, but if you're doing hair on, you're, you, if you're doing the salting method, it's basically pickling it, but I didn't mix up the brining solution enough. And so the hair is slipping out. So what I'm gonna do with this one is I'm probably gonna soak it for longer just because some of the hair isn't slipping, but some of it is. And so like most of it is, but it's gonna turn into buckskin. And I wanted it for a nice throw for my chair, but now it's just gonna be um, a buckskin and you want the hair, like if it, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, you know that the hair, if it comes out, you basically, if the hair is slipping, it literally slips. Like that's why it's called slipping. You can just, um, rub your hand on it and just huge chunks will come out. If you hear it like ripping, then that's not enough. Like this is still not really done good enough so I'll probably let it soak longer yeah I'm pretty sad because this was going to be a beautiful throw but as you know it's it was a really nice looking white tail anyways so yeah and if you actually do decide to use um, the wood ashes or the hydrated lime you will need to rinse it with vinegar just to take that pH back down because um, it'll swell up and then you want it to like shrink back down. It gets like really rubbery almost. So, um, but anyways, I just wanted to go over um, the tools that you'll need. Most important is a flushing beam and your flushing, um, your flushing tool and water, wood ashes, Murphy's oil soap, um, and most importantly, you have to be willing to do some hard work. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to get started on that. Um, I will be doing, cause I have about five hides right now. So I will be doing actually, um, an actual video on, um, 
um, I'll show you the actual flushing process and stuff, but I just didn't set it up right. I just wanted to show you the tools and everything. So, um, and then hopefully, hopefully I get an elk. I'm going hunting tomorrow. So hopefully I get an elk. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll set up a frame and I'll show you, um, the actual dry scrape, um, Native American method of, um, hair on tanning. And I might just do that for my, um, my, some of my bucks or some of my deer hides too, because I'm pretty sad that it didn't work out with that brining solution and it's really heavy and it's a pain in the butt, but we'll see. So anyways, um, this is the start of my hide tanning videos, which I'm really excited about because it's really fun and it's amazing to take something that's disgusting and gross and turn it into something that's beautiful. So, um, yeah, Penny Prepper out.